All right, hi, I'm Heather from Hey Booktubes. My ears are clogged, so if I <laughs> sound weird, I can't really hear myself, so I have no idea what's going on. So last night, I read <laughs> a book, and now you're getting a rant. All right, so last night I read King of Spades, which is Black Spades Trilogy Number 1 by Steph Baca. Full disclosure here, full transparency, on a different day, you wouldn't be getting a rant from me. It would just be a book and my wrap up where I'm like it's not good but I liked it okay and you know that's all you'd really get but <laughs> and in fact I might have DNF'd it if I hadn't kind of committed to the rant because there were so many things that were like making me put the book down and my husband he was only with me like the last bit that I was reading it so we were laying in bed together he was watching The Walking Dead on headphones because I can't do it <laughs> And I was reading this book, but every time I would like see something, I would like sigh and grab my phone and like type it in. And he was laughing at me because it was happening frequently. <laughs> this is a dark why choose high school <laughs> romance where, you know, they are all part of this gang, the spades. And you have one that is the son of the head of the gang. You have one that is the son of the second in command. And the third one, I, we don't know anything about him. I don't know where he's from, what he's doing, but he's there. <laughs> he's the one that hates her. So like we, we don't really get anything from him. But this girl, this girl is Little Miss Goody Two Shoes, except she's not. She's not. They say that, but there is absolutely no context for it. None, none of this. None of this is a thing. <laughs> But she is the daughter of a prosecutor. So her dad is a lawyer and he's working a big case that involves gangs. And she turns 18 on the first page of the book. And on her 18th birthday, her car blows up in her driveway because somebody is trying to kill her. Or maybe it's just a fluke. We don't know. It could be anything. She gets a ride with her best friend, as one does. Uh, to school. She does her schoolwork. She makes eye contact with the gang leaders for some reason. We don't know why. She's gone to the school for a long time as far as we can tell. Don't know why things are suddenly interacting on her 18th birthday, but whatever. She goes home. Her dad, who is her only parent, her only family, offers to, <laughs> offers to get her favorite meal and watch movies. And she's like, nah, that's okay. I'm just tired. I'm gonna go to bed. Okay, who does that on their birthday? <laughs> who does not eat their favorite meal? But you know what? Far be it for me to judge. I say as I make a video that's literally nothing but me judging. So then the next day is a party. <laughs> so she goes to the party, makes eye contact with the gang leaders. Second gen, apparently. <laughs> Holds off the advances of a douchey guy and goes to smoke because she's actually very rebellious. Now, the only way that we really have this rebellion manifesting is that she smokes consistently. <laughs> but a girl's gotta start somewhere. So this is her big rebellion, right? She smokes. Her dad does not seem strict at all. So I'm not really sure where this rebellion is coming from, but whatever. And uh, somebody tries to kill her. Somebody tries to kill her. The three gang guys rescue her, kill her, attack her. This is her first concussion, by the way. She hits her head on a tree. She's got blood coming off of, of her head. She's fine. She's fine. Don't worry about her. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every concussion and head injury this girl got and never went to the hospital for, I would have several several dollars just know that okay she gets home from this party she's talking to her dad the next day but she is an adult she's been 18 for a whole day so she has to handle her shit she needs to be a doll about this so she isn't going to tell her dad that there was another attempt on her life because she's an adult now <laughs> I am 33 I would definitely tell my parents if I thought someone tried to kill me but whatever we are not the same, her and I, so it's understandable. Then 
something else happens. She's starting to get rides from the guys because her best friend and poorly character because she's not a pick me. She's not not like other girls because she has a friend that is a girl. She is really bad at updating her friend on any life events, but she's got one and that's relevant to the story. <laughs> So her friend gets detention, so she ends up getting rides with this one gang guy specifically. He's like really into her. And they're like making out and stuff and things are things are happening. Also, she goes to a fight. Um, also she <laughs> apparently is so motivating to the guy that hates her in the ring with the hands of his friend on her. So that's a thing, even though again, they've literally never spoken to each other <laughs> or anything. <laughs> She gets injured again uh, at some attempt on her life. And this is the perfect time to have sex. Because listen, if you are in pain all over your body, let's do it. This is one of my greatest pet peeves of romances in general. Because let me tell you, if I have been beat, from head to toe because someone tried to kill me. I ran for miles with glass in my foot for no apparent reason. I got punched in the head, all this stuff. I've got pain in my ribs. I want to do it. That's like number one. Why? Because lady hormones. That phrase was used multiple times in this book. Uh, and it frustrates me on many levels. <laughs> Number one, I feel like it's like trying to be funny and edgy in a way that doesn't really work. Like it doesn't do anything. And then also it's gendering something that isn't already gendered in a society that genders everything, right? We have everything set up, especially in English and the United States for men, women, boys, girls, ladies, gentlemen, you know, like there's so much that's already gendered that's really exclusionary. So why, why do we need to assign gender to something that isn't already, already there? Cause it's just hormones. It's not lady hormones. It's not lady boner. It's not lady tingles. It's just being turned on. Like calm down. I hate it. I do not need weird, cushy, coochie, cutie <laughs> language for um, sex parts and sex feelings. I don't need it. I don't need it. This is almost 10 minutes long already and we are nowhere through this book. So <laughs> let's, let's uh, continue. So she has sex after this injury, this attempt on her life. This is concussion number two, if we're coming. <laughs> and then after that, she's in the room with all the guys and she takes a sip of beer that is so good. So good. Also, this is, I think, the second or third time that she has moaned so loudly at taking a drink. God help me. <laughs> I don't even know if I can do this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nope, can't. <laughs> can't do it. Nothing has ever tasted that good. You know, some things just don't need to live on the internet. I'm not making enough money off of this <laughs> for that type of content. Anywho, uh, she moans, she turns everyone on, and this girl is a walking horny, <laughs> horny in a hand basket. I don't know. She's turned on by them beating people, them killing people, their veins, their voice, their eyes, their abs, you know, everything. So at this point, she hasn't seen her dad for a week, but he's been leaving typed notes on the kitchen counter, letting her know that it's working late and stuff. Hasn't seen him for a week. Not suspicious at all. He's probably fine. <laughs> then she held in a gasp, and then she did gasp. <gasps> Um, and she gasped a lot, like every, sometimes it was, it would be like middle of this paragraph, beginning of this paragraph, end of this paragraph. She was, she was a gasper, a moaner and a gasper. <laughs> she's really brave, but she's really scared. She stands her ground, but she trembles inside. She's not afraid to stand up to these guys. Again, even though like she has no history with them, no reason to feel safe. Apparently she's been able to fly under their radar for years. Like 
She's not new to the school. I don't understand why everything is happening and nothing is explained. There is no reason for these people to have a relationship together. We are never given any, any reason why that should be a thing other than they're hot. <laughs> She's scared. Oh, but she is turned on again. And this girl has never been a dick that she did not touch with curious fingers. Do you know why? Because she's only had one sex one time before this. So now every dick that she sees, she's like curious about it. And you know what? I remember the first time I touched, <laughs> I touched and it was like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what this feels like. I am a little bit curious, but how many times did I touch with curious fingers? I'm not sure it was that many times. She gasps at the gun. She gets another, <laughs> she gets another gasp out. Um, apparently I made notes about gasps a lot. One sentence later, she's gasping again. Well, now turns out she's the missing child of both gangs so the old second in command of her gang had an affair with the wife of the head of the other gang and there was a child the wife was murdered by her husband as one does because she's not relevant to the story and uh the second in command did die after having tried to find the baby basically um so turns out she's that baby how exciting is that so actually her dad is not really her dad and her mom that died in childbirth actually did it and obviously she's really mad at the guys for thinking that she might be this child without telling her so because of that she decides to go to the underground fight ring and fight now does she know how to fight no does she have any experience, any training, anything? No, she doesn't. But she is an 18 year old girl with anger issues. And apparently that is enough to beat the ever loving shit out of somebody, especially if it happens to be the mean girl at school because she comes within an inch of murdering this girl with her fist, her bare fist. Does she take some hits? Sure, sure she does. In the head, yeah definitely in the head again because walking concussion but she just obliviates this girl you know has to be pulled off of her she wins Woo! she's so so angry at these guys but that is not enough to keep her from having public sex with them for the first time after the fight because lady hormones first <laughs> She obviously is turned on despite having found out that she was kidnapped as a baby. Why would we let that <laughs> take over our mind? And she did have to be kissed in order to not faint because she's lady meat in the middle of dangerous, raunchy gangsters. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Did we need that? I hate it here. So she's a walking concussion. She's been hit in the head so many times, never seeing a doctor, but is that going to stop her from running straight into another near death <laughs> experience as someone tries to kill her? No, it certainly is not. She's mad. So safety can come last. So she goes back to her house where, you know, they had tried to kill her once before and that's why she'd been living with these guys. And so she goes back, her dad's not there, her dad is missing, right? We've established that now, by the way, her dad is missing. And so she goes there, everything's fine for about a week until, you know, someone tries to burn down her house with her in it. She gets burned. She falls off the roof of the house onto cement. Don't let that alarm you. She's basically fine. <laughs> Nothing a little aspirin can't fix. Uh, they do try to kill her on the cement, but of course the guys come to the rescue as they would. Plus there's a man to torture now and there is no greater to turn on than a group torture therapy session. They torture him. They put lemon juice in all of his many injuries and stuff. She pops an aspirin and it's time for a threesome. <laughs> The obligatory mewling and disappointment anytime they pull away because that's important. The one who hates her comforts her because after watching her fight, they both have the same darkness in them. <laughs> Their cars really turn her on, by the way. Despite multiple car accidents at this point. But then all hell breaks loose. She is once again hit in the head. 
and knocked out. She's kidnapped. And now the other gang has her. But wait, but wait, her dad, who's not really her dad, also never loved her. He was actually just raising her as a placeholder for the gang so they could kill her once she turned 18 because there's a trust that she gets access to after she's 18. And as long as she was 18, she's the inheritor. Um, and if she dies, then it just goes to her next of kin, which would be her dad. That's not really her dad because he did actually legally adopt her so they can get the money. So that's why we raised her for 18 years. It's also why we have all the sudden attempts on her life as soon as she turned 18, car bomb, knife to the throat, uh, other car chase, other attack, house burning. Um, she's trying to be killed like seven times at this point. But the thing I don't understand is the dad was in on the entire time, so the dad could have just killed her as her dad, as a person that she trusted, as a person that she didn't suspect at all. They had a good relationship. He could have killed her at any point. At any point. Instead. He staged his own missingness and let other people try to attack her and kill her. It doesn't make any sense. He could have killed her whenever he wanted. It would have been so easy, so clean, so simple. You know what? That's exactly why it didn't happen. Because she would have been dead and the book would have been over. Because it would have been successful. So he was just keeping her on ice for the gang and told her she killed her mother in childbirth because he knew that the guilt would eat her alive and that would be the easiest way to keep her alive. Which I find odd because, the uh, one, I just don't think it's a great strategy in general, but two, like this whole book, he's been painted as a good dad, but a workaholic basically but still like a good loving compassionate dad but apparently <laughs> apparently not so then by the way one of the guys that she killed on one of the many attempts of her life was actually the best friend of the son of the head of the other gang so now they're gonna kill her best friend remember that female friend that was very important to the story because she, she's not not like other girls she has a girl yeah they're gonna kill her as payback. Um, so she's like handcuffs or whatever. And she's like, you know what? You know what would fix this? What if I just broke my own wrist? Do I escape? No. Am I able to get my hand through the handcuffs? No. But do not let it be said that I sat here and did nothing while my friend was murdered because I broke my wrist. Okay. I broke it. I broke it in the name of rescue. I don't know. So she breaks her wrist. Her best friend is killed, is shot right in front of her. Her best friend does take the time to whisper, I love you <laughs> to her friend before dying very dramatically for, you know, her friend's sins. Mere moments later, I mean, maybe not because she kind of blacks out a little bit, kind of zones out, kind of, you know, is out of it. She's rescued, by the way. And also the guy that definitely should have died when she was taken in the first place. He's fine. He's fine. Only the friend can be killed. They finally take her to the hospital for the broken wrist. Never mind the many concussions. <laughs> so at this point, we find out that she lived in the gray, even though they tried to raise her in the white. But her true heritage of darkness won out, and now she's in the black. <laughs> but will a little thing like grief, a broken wrist, and other assorted injuries, including the accumulative concussions, be enough to stop her from having one last threesome? Can't keep a good lady hormone down, so this would be the perfect time to try anal for the first time and double penetration. Because it's just a broken wrist. I've got, I've got painkillers. <laughs> We're fine here. Um, and then we end the book. And then we end the book with the big old revelation that it turns out that the trust actually can't be given to anybody because there are two possible inheritors. So one must die. One can assume it's not going to be her, although they're going to try to make it her. You know? So that was King of Spades by Stuff Mecca. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I got this off my chest. 
honestly the the main reason for it to be a standalone rant review is because obviously I was able to rant for it for over 20 minutes and I definitely don't want that shoehorned into the middle of my monthly wrap up because they're long enough as it is. So this got its own dedicated video and also it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Is it the worst dark romance I've ever read? No, not even close. Was it good? No. Did I make up things to be annoyed about? No. But was it as bad as it could have been? Also, no. <laughs> so there you go. They're obsessed with her. We don't know why, but we do know that she wears combat boots. So obviously she's got her shit together. She wasn't wearing them the one time she stepped on glass and had to run for her life. But you know, the rest of the time she's wearing combat also, boots. Also, apparently she just had a growth spurt. Everything still fits her, except all of her shirts show her boobs more. So, very specific type of growth spur, I guess, because her shoes fit, her pants fit, it's just more cleavage. There you go. Brought to you by Lady Hormones, Lady Meat, Gasps, Moans, and a lot of concussions. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.